I don't think it's hard to look at native vegetation as a really important way of just um, maintaining the stability of the landscape, uh, the quality of the water, the quality of the air and the quality of the soil. If you're observant and you drive around the hills, you see obviously vast areas of orchards, vineyards, pasture country, and there is a small amount of native scrub left. So when I had the opportunity to intervene to look after what is a relatively small parcel of a relatively small amount that's left, it just seemed to me like the logical and sort of right thing to do, I guess. That whole notion of leaving somewhere at least as good, if not probably better than when you started, is something that I think is very important. The same things that drive biodiversity in the hills, such as the higher rainfall and the good quality soils, are also what drives our primary production. Anybody who owns land in the Adelaide Hills plays a huge role in actually conserving biodiversity and trying to prevent that further species loss that we've been experiencing. The ecosystem in the Adelaide Hills is very special because it's right at the highest rainfall zone in South Australia. So we, we've got a, a beautiful thick um, forest of uh, stringy barks and an, a really um, beautiful uh, understory that's nowhere else. So the richness in the diversity of that woodland is incredible. The weeds that we have in the Adelaide Hills, some of the woody weeds such as gorse and blackberry, really bear out the soil underneath them and that leaves that soil exposed to, to damage and to um, erosive forces. Controlling those weeds is really important but also replacing that cover so that we have something growing on top of that soil to protect it. So actively managing for us was as simple as taking the dog for a walk. You can thank the dog for the, the quality of the bushland here to some extent because he's desperate to go and walk through it. We observed that blackberries in particular were getting a real hold in various patches and blackberries will be a thousand dollar problem one year, five thousand the next, fifteen thousand the next. So having watched them go from one thousand to fifteen thousand dollars I thought before it gets to thirty I should do something about it. So we took steps to start eradicating the blackberries. In looking at them we then learnt a bit more about what problem species we had here. It's really a question of just observing where you are. Get out, walk, enjoy the beautiful piece of bush, but have a look at it, observe what's going on. So many places in the hills have got steep gullies, um, they're difficult to manage, they won't have vineyard on it, they won't have anything on it, but they're probably full of blackberry, gorse, or anything that's not really fabulous. You think, my God, where am I gonna start? And the best thing to do is to talk to the NRM guys. They have got the best strategies to take on a big task and break it down into small units. And you don't have to do it in a season. Just think about the fact that it's probably been there for 15, 20, 30 years. You're not gonna get rid of it in one year. Just take it in small pieces and work your way from the outside going in, stick with it. There are certain parts of the landscape that just have a huge regeneration potential where you don't necessarily need to go in there and do a whole lot of planting, that simply controlling the weeds will provide enough of an advantage to the native plants to regenerate on their own because of the surrounding native vegetation or the seed that lies in the soil. One of the biggest changes that's happened in the Adelaide Hills since the onset of a European settlement is the way that the water flows off the landscape. It flows off a lot faster than it used to and that's changing the shape of watercourses all throughout the region. Erosion becomes a huge problem in our watercourses and when we have erosion we have silty water. Actually slowing the flow of water across the landscape becomes an essential part of good watercourse management. Part of the water management is to control things like erosion and we've got certain spots here which once upon a time before we came were really badly eroded. We basically wanted to slow that stream, slow the velocity so we've taken uh, bits and pieces and put, put them in there to slow the flow but also making sure we've got adequate ground cover. 
uh, when you get heavy rain events, if you don't have good ground cover, everything just washes away to the bottom of the paddock and, and that's no good um, because then part of that is, is all your nutrition as well. So all the nutrients and all those sorts of things, you want to keep them in the paddock, not down the bottom in the creek or in the dams. Protecting waterways is pretty important in the Lenswood area. We're high up in the top of the catchment. Whatever comes from here has a long way to travel. So any land manager in the hills knows that their slopes need to be managed carefully in terms of trying to hold the soil together. And you need vegetation there just to slow the water down. If you can keep your waterways vegetated, that's gonna just keep your waterways together instead of getting deeper, getting wider, and sending so much more soil down to your neighbor.